Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche Podcast. We've got AJ, we've got Eric, we've got Ruto coming to you live on a Friday. We had the game the other day. Before that, we talked about some of the obstacles the Avs are going to face this year. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the paths to success for the Avalanche this year. But it is a Friday, so I did want to have a little bit of fun with it. Wanted to play a little game with it. Would you like to play a game? Yeah, exactly. This is Saw, and if you get it wrong, you're dead. (laughs) You have Jigsaw that comes. Yeah. I guess, actually, the the puppet's name is Billy. Wheels out on his tricycle or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, What we're going to do is I'm going to name two players, and then these two need to tell me which one is more important to succeed this year and why. All right. And I'm going to start with one right down the middle. Oh, Lord. We're going to go with the two new centers. Oh, Lord. Ryan Johansson and Ross Colton. Who's more important to be successful this year? I'll go first. (laughs) I think I know your answer. I'm going to go opposite of it. Or actually, I don't know. I'm going to go Colton. I I just feel that somewhere, somehow, Johansson's going to, even if he's okay, it's good enough for the abs. Sure. And with McKinnon, you know. And then I I think where they lack last year was a line like Colton and, you know, and company, whoever's gonna be with him, whether it's sure, sure. you know, Wood or and Tatar. But I just do believe what he brings, all the intangibles. I I he's got a pedigree of a champion. Um, you know, have a bigger role. Um I just watching him. Uh, everything is just done right. All the de- the abs have the highest end players in the National Hockey League. Granted, and McKinnon, Makar, best player in the world. Um, but I, you know, they lacked a little bit of that, you know, real depth. And I think he solidifies everything and he puts everything all together for me. All right, <laughs> Brian Johansson, it is. All right. <laughs> I stole um, his Colton. <clears throat> I'm kidding. Because, so with with Ryan Johansson, he's better than Ross Colton is. Uh, yeah. He's just a higher ceiling player. Uh, and we saw what happens when the Avalanche have better than just an average second line center. Uh, they turn into world beaters behind their elite guys. And they unhinge their jaw and swallow the NHL hole like a big ass snake. So Ryan Johansson getting, uh, you know, tapping into the the vast potential he's always had in his career, but he's never really been pushed. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the Nashville country club wasn't the right atmosphere (laughs) to get it out of him. And so I think, uh, I think, I think the craziness of McKinnon, you know, that intensity. And I think that the Colorado culture will bring out a Ryan Johansson that we're, we've been waiting his entire career to see. How long until we make a country club cats shirt? (laughs) I don't know, man. Um, but I think I think with Rijo, you're talking about a guy that could easily have a 75 point season as Colorado's two C, uh, and uh, the 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 faceoff acumen, the right shot, which we know is really important to what the Abs are trying to do. They need that kind of guy, and in recent years, that that guy that got pigeonholed into that was JT Comper, and with Ryan Johansson, you just have a better NHL player there now. <coughs> yep. So imagine all, all the success. That they had with JT Confer, who's a good player. Yep. And now you have a better one in that spot. So for me, it's it's Ryan Johansson because he ties it together. In this conversation, look, I I want to play a game and we're gonna have fun with it, but really the conversation is the Avs need one of these two guys to be a bona fide two C. It doesn't really matter which one as long as one of them is doing it. Yeah. Um and they need that to function to a level of JT Confer last year at absolute minimum. That should be the floor of expectation yep. for that guy. No, but 100%. I agree. I mean, Joe Johansson will be the two the two C. I was saying like, as a third line center, Colton will be kind of the glue more that puts it all together. You know, sure. I mean? but I do agree with you. He'll be yeah. the second line center, Johansson. And I just wanted to steal Colton from you. That's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I let you go first. It's all good. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting which way. How I'll put it this way. I'm curious to see which player starts hotter because you have two guys coming into a new team. Theoretically, Johansson should be playing with more talent depending on how they do yeah. organize those top six lines. 
nothing against Tomas Tatar or Miles Wood or whoever ends up there. It's just the reality of your your best players usually end up in your top six. So, obviously, in a perfect world, both of them succeed. And yep. then you're really talking about the Avs as having a, a very strong year offensively. Um, Being good down the middle is uh, pretty important. Kind of a thing that teams would like to do, yeah. it turns out. Yeah. Uh, I want to go. Hey, can, I, can I just ask Eric real quick? Yeah. From your front office days. Yeah. When you're building a team, goaltender, top pairing, center depth. Yep. Prioritize them. Rank them one through three. I, I'm going to go, I, I think, to win top pairing. Okay. Uh, if you're Vegas, you know, center and then goalies. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, but I've always emphasized on goal in my mind, you know what I mean? And, and then sentiment, but they're all so close, right? It's all like one yeah. A, B, and C. You, you know of course I mean? need all of them, but That's like if saying. you're yeah, trying gonna, to yeah. if you go into an off season. I, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going top here, you know, okay. defense first, goalie, then I'm going sentiment. I think it's a, I think I would agree with that list. Just yeah. we've seen with goaltenders in recent years who have won the last handful of Stanley Cups, like. Braden Holpe wins one. Yeah. Jordan Bennington wins one. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously you have the Vasilevsky years where it's yeah. like, oh, God. Well, you need a goalie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, and then yeah. Darcy Kemper wins one. And then, Aiden Hill wins one. Yeah. It's like you need a goalie. Yeah. You need a good goalie to get hot. Yeah. A good More than you need Vasilevsky. Any NHL caliber goalie can get hot for two months and win you the thing. Yeah. But that's how I always say. It's a good question. But that's why I always say Kale McCart for me. Kale McCarr, I always say, you know, most valuable player in the entire league. You know, yeah. for that reason. When you say when you say best yeah. player in the world, I always roll my eyes because yeah. I disagree. But when yeah. you say most valuable player in the I league, I'm say, like, yeah. I, that's what I meant to say that. That's what I I'm always need to say. Most I, valuable yeah. because a puck, you know, starts on you. If, if you're McKinnon and you got to chase the puck all night long, it's not fun. You know what I mean? But when you got McCarr, oh, you, 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 you you're so really good. sending it to, to McKinnon, right? You know, that's the way I look. So at I want to I want to apply this question directly to the evs i'll give you all three who's most important to colorado to have a successful year mckinnon makar or georgiev <laughs> shit <laughs> that's a tough question i mean they're all choice. three right i mean yeah, like, of course uh, funny boy, enough man. mckinnon is third on that list for me there you yeah, go i think i have to go back to what we just talked about one two three which is d goalie four so I, I do, Georgie, I'm picking Georgiev, especially in light of the uncertainty of Pavel Francouz. Sure. Because, um, and this is obviously not a knock on Eustace Onodin, but if Eustace Onodin has to play 50 games for you this year. You're in trouble, yeah. I think you might be in trouble, and it might be one of those, like we've been talking about LA or, yeah. you know, Buffalo, New Jersey, some of these teams. I that know. might that might make like a big move for a goaltender. Yeah. Carolina, you know, that... If something serious were to happen to Georgiev Could and there's no Colorado, Frankie, yeah. Colorado, Colorado should be being like, okay, like <laughs> we like Cal Ritchie, but we need a goalie, man. Hi, Connor Helva, how are you? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean that would be a. <laughs> you want to come play Colorado for a season? That would be a boon for me on a personal level because <laughs> I love Connor Helva. So, <laughs> rightfully so. Yeah, as long as he doesn't have to play 75 games, he'll be all right. <laughs> but. Makar, I, I just think with Makar, the thing about Georgiev and why I would have him behind Makar is that if he were to get hurt, you could theoretically replace him. Yeah. Sure. There is no replacing Kale Makar. Nope. There just isn't. And as wonderful as McKinnon is, we saw last year, at least in the regular season, you can get by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but without Kale Makar, I mean, I know their record is pretty solid without him in the last couple of years. But well, that a, doesn't change that. I think that's a testament the to the team. Ridiculous, yeah. But you see the difference with Kale McCarr. He's just Oof. unmatched in his value. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue with you. I mean, I'm bang. It, it, we're we're on the same page there. <laughs> it's a. So, I, I, I mean, it's. You're right. The word is valuable. To that's play right devil's advocate just a little bit. Because I agree, I would put yeah. them in the same order that you yeah. have them. Mm -hmm. uh, for Nathan McKinnon, there is a world <laughs> where 
he is he's doing the Kirill Kaprizov thing. He's doing the Sidney Crosby thing where he is dragging players to 50 point seasons. Yeah. And if you lose some of that, look, the league has never been more offensively minded in my life than it is right now. Your has this scoring hasn't been this high since the 80s. And if you lose a guy that is not only mm. producing 100 plus point seasons himself, but turning 30 point guys into 50 point guys, Arturi Lekkinen is an example of that. You've seen it in, in years before that. He's turned guys like Matt Calvert into functional top line players for certain stretches. Do you start to run into a little bit of a problem in Colorado where they cannot score enough to get over the hump at times? And look, there's totally a world where Kale McCarr has a 100-point season, and the answer to that is no, it's fine. But if you have a Kale McCarr that maybe isn't 100% healthy, which has happened every year of his career so far, if you're having a Nathan McKinnon that's having more like a 70-point season, that's a lot of scoring that this lineup would have to find. Put it that way. Yeah. And I don't... There is no... There is a lot less flexibility with the Avs' center depth, I will say. We've seen them pretty happily move Migo to the second line, move Vichushkin up, move Lekin and down, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Ryan Johansson is not moving up to the top line over Nathan McKinnon in, in any scenario. Yeah. So Not in any kind of healthy one, yeah. Yeah. So th there's a little bit more riding on Nathan McKinnon in that regard. I think even with Kale McCarr, Devon Taves behind him, you feel... Hey, we still have at least one top pairing guy mm -hmm. there. Yeah. But it oh. is the ultimate splitting of hairs to say that the guy who's going to win the con Smythe this year is their third <laughs> yeah. most important player. Right. It's a bit silly, <laughs> you know, to say the least. Like, it's like, it's, there's a reason that we That's talk a good about problem. Yeah. Like, it's, it's an embarrassment of high end talent in Colorado. Yeah. All right. I have two more. Uh, Great. Do it. One that's a, a bit silly. Logan O'Connor, Andrew Cogliano. Logan O'Connor. Yeah. Sorry, you you went first last time. And right, I don't want to have to take Cogs. He's taking a little LOC. Shoot. Yeah, uh, LOC. So um, the Spidey sense tingles with LOC this year. Um, I told you guys this last night, but I guess one of my hot takes coming into the year is I think he's going to push for a 15-goal season. Um, I think we're going to see him push for more like a 30-point 30, 30 kind of season um, because I do think that as much as Ross Colton is going to replace JT Confer as the lineup Swiss Army knife kind of jack-of-all-trades guy, yep. uh, I think that LOC's trust means that he's the first wing to move up into the top nine upon any kind of injury, any kind of whatever. He's the guy that they will try to, to put in there. He's the guy with the highest floor. Uh, defensively, incredibly responsible. He's extremely reliable in a game-to-game -game setting. He very rarely has a bad game. He just does not have very many bad games. He doesn't have a, a whole bunch of great games, but his his baseline level of performance is very... It, it, it's Coach Catnip, you know? It's, it's super reliable. It's exactly what a coach wants out of a bottom six guy. Uh, the speed, the smarts takes care of his own end first, and then he'll chip in enough offense that you don't ever really worry about it. Yeah, he'll go through stretches like he did last year. You know, and he goes 30 or 40 games or whatever in between goals. That's probably a little more extreme than it should be. <laughs> but, you know, he had like five goals in the first like 11 games or something crazy last season. Like he, he came out of the gates on fire and then, you know, I think it mellows out a little bit and it's more like a 12 games, you know, every 12 games or something, he'll have a, he'll have a goal or some level of like big night production wise. Uh, and I just think that what he does is he, he's just better at what Cogliano does on the ice at this point in his career. I hate to agree with you, but yeah, I agree. But on the flip side, you know, if we were going to argue then I'd say Cogliano because 92 is not there, right? the leader, the captain. Yeah. This is one of your, you know, Eric Johnson's not there. So this is a guy that, that's been around, that, that's reinvented himself in lineups over the, what is it, 17 seasons? No, I don't remember. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. Like that, you know? a lot For of not games. a small guy. I mean, not a big guy. It's pretty remarkable. 
longevity. I mean, uh, you know, consistency and his longevity with him. We, yeah, that's his line, right? He that tries to tell young guys. So I think he's very valuable that way. Not so much on the ice, uh, even though he is valuable on the ice. He's just a junkyard dog. And um, but I, yeah, I agree with you. You know, I, I think it's be more like the intangibles off the ice, especially with EJ and and Gabe not there. You know, he gains that a little bit of an advantage right there. Uh, one last one, and this one may be a little bit more mercurial than the other three. Riley Tufty, Sam Malinsky. Yeah. So I think I would probably just go with Sam Malinsky purely on he plays the positional value yeah. of uh, yeah. if he ends up playing, if both guys end up playing 40 games, Malinsky is going to impact those. Because even even a low minutes third pairing D, he's playing fifteen minutes, and yeah. we've seen and Tough D's Jared, playing seven, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so I think it's just by default, Sam Malinsky for me. Um, but I think that's uh, a fair argument. Yeah, yeah, like I I I think just for for that it would be Malinsky. But I also think there are good arguments for Tufty. Uh, and and they're great questions. Not because we're trying to pump Bruto's tires, but they're great questions. You know what I mean, they're fun questions, and and I love to argue with AJ. But you know, it's tough to argue right now when we're on the same wavelength. But it's I, hard to argue with a guy that's right all the time. I know. You know I mean, AJ's saying? right all the time. What can we say? <laughs> this preseason, I think Eric's probably been more right than you. Oh, so. God, I love Bruto. Bruto's the man. <laughs> I'm kidding. But on, on the Tufty side, uh, this traitor. You know, on the Tufty side, then. You know, Ego, I'm going to, you know, we're going to go a little bit of wishful, you know, thinking. And hopefully, again, I got to knock on that wood thing. Again. Um, you know, let's say there there are a couple injuries and, you know, minor, not major. And then all of a sudden he gets an elevated yeah, this rule. Is... And then you find your mm -hmm. your Valerie Nakushka. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, he's a tall guy. He can skate. He becomes something like that. Then you're like, oh, my God, we found that. That's pretty amazing. You know, I, so, this is the argument you have to make for Tufty yeah. because... Yep. There, in a world where Sam Malinsky has to play in the Avs top four, something horrible has happened. Yeah. You're in big, big trouble. And that's nothing against Sam Malinsky. No. It's just he's not going to replace uh, yeah. Devon Taves or yeah. Kale McCarr. Yeah, come on. Or even a Bowen Byram or Sam Gerrard. That's not a no. realistic ask. Whereas with Tufty, <laughs> there's a world where if yeah. he plays well enough, maybe he all of a sudden is a serviceable third line winger for you yeah getting a little bit of a bigger role for sure. sure so especially if he's like the third best guy on that line sure and it's not like tufty and olafson and then they sign kivi ranta and the dallas threes yeah. back together where you're like <laughs> oh this is this is pretty blah if he's like where miles wood is yeah. right now if he's next to colton and tatar it's like man just be serviceable right yeah. that line's gonna be all right yeah just do your job exactly yeah. so Maybe a little bit more room for success for Tufty. Not that he necessarily gets that, but true. Worth having a conversation about a few guys. Do want to get more into this conversation on a more general success for Colorado. But first, we are brought to you by Foco. Head on over to Foco.com today. Use code DNVR to get 10% off your order. You can get all sorts of awesome sports merch, apparel, whatever it is you're looking for, whether it be uh, Avalanche licensed apparel or bobbleheads. Everyone's favorite thing from Foco is their bobblehead, so go check those out if you haven't. It doesn't have to be abs either. It can be any team, not just in Colorado, but pretty much anywhere in the country. Go get your favorite uh, guy, whoever that might be. I don't know. I'm trying to think of someone who played football well, but I don't really watch football that much, so I don't know. Pick your favorite football player and get his bobblehead if you want. Go for it. Why not? It's Travis Kelsey. You're, is it really? I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, not for me personally. Just he's now America's favorite football player. You think they player. have a Taylor Swift bobblehead yet? Yes. Then go get one of those. That's the easy answer. They, I mean, right they should. There. I'm saying. I'm here for it. Foco.com. <laughs> Use the DNV echo. There you go. Tiff showing off some of the merch you can get over at Foco right now. Uh, I, can, I don't even know what half of those things are, to be honest with you. Dude, the accessory lineup that they have is so deep. Crazy stuff. They really do. Uh, did you guys see Sidney Rock in the overalls the other day? Yeah. Yep. I really actually kind of like them. I kind of like them. Ooh, I like the Nuggets ones a lot more than the Broncos ones. Yeah, oh, the Broncos ones were rough. 
the uh, the plaid checkered the is like, not for me. Yeah, the like Bronco lumberjack look. I yeah. was like, this is ugly. This yeah. is not it for me. Maybe stick with the Nuggets overalls then, folks. Uh, it's really <laughs> just the plaid that I... Yeah, I'm, I'm I, with you. I'm yeah. with you. It's, it's hard for me. Foco.com. Use the DNVR code to get 10% off. And if you need a little extra spending cash, maybe go win some money over at Bet365. They don't do ordinary at Bet365. They think every sport should be epic. So that's why when you sign up today with code DNVR365, they're giving you $365 in bonus bets when you bet just $1. Uh, we also highly recommend to get in on uh, the DNVR custom bet. We have our, our very own bet that we get to get to pick over at Bet365, usually set up by Dre and our boys on the betting show. So if you trust them to win you some money, go hit the DNVR custom bet. Uh, make sure you sign up with that DNVR365 code when you do. Uh, and then, of course, you can get all sorts of great bonus bets and boosts and all sorts of amazing stuff, whatever that may be. Uh, you can you can get in on a lot of stuff. Trust me, I'm I'm all in on the esports betting again as winter comes back around. We've got Counter Strike Two to bet on starting tomorrow. Let's see you. Let's go. You're a believer. Yes. All right. You heard it they here first. They should beat Arizona State. You would you would think. Uh, anyway, uh, jump on over to Bet Three Six Five. You must be 21 or older and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text one eight. Hundred gambler second period of the dnvr avalanche podcast and we're sticking with bet 365 here we got the bet 365 never ordinary top five for you look the next game the abs will play will be their season opener so i figured let's talk about the best season openers in abs history a couple right. of a couple of fun facts to start off for you guys just so just so you know all time the Avs are 14, 9, 3, and 1 in season openers. Is that so when they when you break it out, which one is the OTL? Uh the one. Okay. Is the OTL. Three ties. God. The pro tie crowd should just remember that three opening nights ended in ties. And that's why they're stupid. I have no problem with it. Uh seven and three in their last ten. So they have half of their opening wins. In those, this last decade here, in the Nathan McKinnon era, essentially. Hell yeah, Nate Mac. Uh, <laughs> pretty good at it. Catch dubs. I will warn you, all of their top five best season opening wins did come at home. And they are not at home this year. So take that with a grain of salt. But we can jump into it. Number five. Uh, 2018 versus Minnesota. They beat them 4-1. Not anything super noticeable Notable in this game. Miko Rand and Carl Soderberg both had it two points. Uh, it was one of the few games where the Avs won by three or more. The more interesting ones come later. So didn't have a ton to say about that one. Uh, number hey, four, Beating up on Minnesota on opening night time. is always, yeah. <laughs> they have uh, a couple bad losses to Minnesota on opening night as the well. First so. game I ever covered. Yikes. <laughs> first real game. Not the first preseason game, which was against Anaheim. Was that the the 05 game? The 0-5 to five game? Where the Avs got shut out? Or is that the one where the Parise co- hat trick come yeah, back? Yeah, the Parise okay. hat trick, yeah. Right. yeah. Both were not fun. Let me tell you, the first NHL locker room that I ever walk into, I'm like, come on <laughs> with this. This is a <laughs> morgue. <laughs> Can always be worse. Put it to you that way. Number four, 2009 versus San Jose. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't really remember this one, but they oh, scored five I goals. Do. I remember this game well. Cody McLeod has a goal in this game. He does. Uh, so this was Joe Sackick's retirement night. It was. This was the NHL debut of Matt Duchesne and Ryan O'Reilly. Yep. Uh, I believe O'Reilly picked up an assist in this. Yep. Duchesne got stuffed on a breakaway, but... I think he had an assist. The too. entire building flipped out hmm. because he got a breakaway and didn't score, and people still lost their minds. <laughs> Uh, it was supposed to be the transition. It was the passing of the torch from Joe Sackick to Matt yeah. Duchesne. And it felt like it on night one because that was a bad Avs team. And that was a great Sharks team. Uh, really, as evidenced by how that season would end when the Sharks yeah. would end it in, in five. 
It was six, was it? it was six. six. Oh, it was six. You're right. You're right. Yes. You're right. They had no business being as deep as they were no. at, in that in that series. Eric, I'm sure you remember that team well. Oh yeah. Um yeah, no, that was a very fun night. That's a that is the first Avalanche game at Pepsi Center I ever got to attend. There you go. Oh wow. So back yeah. in the city. Yeah, I had just moved back to Colorado. So Craig um, Anderson had a great year that year. He was um, awesome. Especially that night, too. I think it's, we started the right way that year. It was fun. It was fun to see the youth. And like you said, seeing Joe retire and then those guys kind of take over. You know, yeah. It was fun. It was a fun night. That's a good choice there. Yep. Uh, Wojt Wolski was the uh, two-goal scorer in that game, for the record. So, not Pretty good. Shame. Number three, this one you'll definitely remember. Last year against Chicago, a 5-2 win. Uh most memorable part of that night for you guys? What, Jack Johnson? <laughs> it kind of has to be. It's Jack Johnson two years in a row because the first year it, w- it was the goal that he scores against Chicago yep. where he goes, he has that breakaway where he scores on Flurry and goes backhand on him. That's right. And then last year it's Jack Johnson hugging everybody. Like yep. a Watching guy on the opposing team. Yep. Is like hugging all of them as the banner goes up, and you're just like, ah! and the game starts, and the beating commences, and you don't really. It's like, okay, this went more or less how I, it should. Like, but b- banner banner nights are fun. Like yeah. I remember, obviously the Avs '96, and I'm a player in '96, '97, and I remember being here, and there's a few of us like Billington, myself, Aaron Miller, you know, that hadn't won, and then we were kind of. Mm. Cast away a little bit on the side there, but it's uh, it's awesome to see it raised. And uh, I I want to say we beat San Jose four one that night. It was I, I always stick to my you know, in my mind those better better nights are fun. Yeah, I know. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Number three on the list. We're still going through kind of a laundry list of of production here on opening night last year. Lekkinen had a three-point night with two goals. Rantanen had three points. Nachushkin had two goals. McKinnon and McCarr both had two points. Best players were your best players in that hockey game. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Number two, 2013 versus Anaheim. Another game that maybe not remembered for the Avs blowing out the other team, but remembered for Patrick Waugh breaking the glass onto Bruce Boudreau. Uh, But they also dominated the hell out of that game, including two goals from Jamie McGinn, a three-point night for Alex Tangay. Both McKinnon, Downey, and Ryan O'Reilly had two points. Downey maybe the odd one out there. But lots of production, lots of scoring, and a, a banger finish to a game that was not close. Yeah, I was uh, in the building for that one, too. It was... Uh, and so what I'm learning is you need to be the building for the season opener for good things to happen. I mean, I, I was in the building for... Most games, I'm sure, in that well, stretch. Well, but... like... Because that was before I got the credential. Sure, sure. Um, but I was still in the building for like nine straight season openers. You know, like it was even yep. when I was flat broke. That was the one game a year that I would go to. Yep, it's opening night, man. Like <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Eric, I'm sure in the building for plenty of season openers. As yes. Well. So I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a uh, here's one. You were still playing during, not with the abs, but, or maybe, no, no, you were gone before 2003, right? Yeah, that was, I worked with the abs that year. That's my ah, first there you year go. in there. Yeah. There you go. Well, 5-0, shut out on opening night, dominant. Paul Correa had three points. First goal of the season for Colorado is Correa from Solani, setting us up for that ultimate failure of a season. Uh, <laughs> Major heartbreak. <laughs> Peter Forsberg also had three night three points that night. Hayduk scored twice. Sackick had two points. Abs. When they're good, they're good. I'll put it to you that way. So Do you know what day that game was? Just I out of curiosity. Don't off the top of my head. I'm just curious. David Abishir taking over Patty Wobb. Crowd was chanting, Ad B, Ad B. Everybody <laughs> was chanting. It was I, I, honestly, it was an electric night. I was telling AJ earlier, Stefan Yell was now in Calgary, I believe, that year, and they had a team October party 10th. that night. They had a team party that night, and there, uh, somebody said, like, somebody wasn't watching. They're like, what do you mean you're not watching the 
the Avs game against Chicago's 10 nothing in the first period, and then actually the Flames believed it because mm-hmm. they were like, oh my God, they're going to be a wagon this year, the Avs. And, you know, <laughs> and they'll be in 5 nothing. It wasn't 10 nothing, but that's all the hype of that season was with Korea Solani, but you know, it wasn't the greatest ending. Yeah. Uh, it's the only game on the, this list that I. Nothing to do with. Because you're too young. No. No. I was old enough. It was uh, just the timing <laughs> yeah. in your life. Yeah. Uh, look, I think a good one to top it to say both. The Avs can have wildly successful opening nights, and that lead to good things. And also, a good opening night could mean nothing in the long sense of the season. Mm. You know, it's funny. When opening night happens next week, it will be the world's most important game. Right up until the next <laughs> game. And then they will drop the puck on game, in game two yep. in San Jose. And it'll just be one of 82, man. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't set a tone. Doesn't do anything. Just doesn't. It's just a, it, it ends up just being a one of 82. But those end up like those memories are so fun. Yeah. Because that enthusiasm to have it. The, it's it's so back, high man. on game one. And yeah. especially, especially like, you know, 2009, 2013. It was, those were very, like, symbolic evenings. You know, Sackick's jersey goes into the rafters. Yeah. And Duchesne, like, that that era That new starts. era. And then the McKinnon new era comes in 2013. Exactly, because 2013. Patrick Waugh at the yeah, helm. Like yeah, like, Patrick Waugh's bad, but that's Nathan McKinnon's first game. You yeah. know, like, they're, those were, like, like, very symbolic evening. And last year, very symbolic. Yep. You know, t- 2003, uh, symbolic in a, a way because David literal Abisher, symbol <laughs> got put up in like last da- year, David Abisher takes over for Patrick Waugh. So, you know, it's and, and the only one on that list is just like, yeah, they have to be Minnesota that year. Yep. You know? Yep. Uh, so it goes to show you, I, you know, hey, man, you could have put 96 up there because it was their first ever game and it was against Detroit, who we didn't know at the I, time. I did almost put 95 up there. Yeah. Like, we, we we didn't know that Detroit was going to end up being. What it was about being, to become, yeah. The, you know, the, the, the death star that they were yep. that season because that's the year they won 62. So. White jerseys and black helmets. <laughs> Only I, game ever. I Bring them back. I like the look, man. Yeah. It, it does look weird now because I'm mm. so accustomed to those. Ugly ass Walmart helmets that they wear now, but like ass. I like them. But they didn't have the white helmets. That's why they play with the black ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I first liked them, man. Then a decade from them. now, we're gonna be able to delineate when someone became an Avs fan simply by saying blue pants. Yeah, <laughs> which <laughs> kit do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, that was our bet three six five never ordinary top five. A fun one for for the season opener coming up soon here. Uh, but we did get a little bit of news in the middle of that segment, as chat has already mentioned. The Avs did sign Sage Weinstein to an ELC. Um, are you not a little bit mad if you're Jeremy Hansel? No. No? So the major difference here, because I know that there's going to be somebody out there that asks this question, somebody else that well, asks this question. I, get, I know Sage is 18, and he'll go back to his junior team he's, for the next two years. He's 18. It. There's no rush. They get him under contract. They're light on draft picks. They're light on defensive prospects. This is a guy that the one thing that you really liked about what they what Sage Weinstein brought in rookie camp and preseason, he was very clearly not ready. There's no... He's 18. Yeah. It An was, undrafted 18-year-old. Yeah. It it was that he was very toolsy. He doesn't have particularly great size. He's six foot, 175 pounds. Okay. But he was a good skater. He was a good puck mover. You know, he used his size effectively at times. Like very toolsy. There's a there's you can see a player someday there. And when you sign an 18-year-old kid to an ELC especially one that's in the CHL right now, it's a five-year deal. Yep. Because it will slide the next couple, and then he'll have three years. I'd have to check his birthday, but he, like, might be eligible for the AHL, depending on whenever he turns 20. Like, yeah. When you said undrafted. Yeah, he was undrafted last year. And even then, it's a five-year deal, and you're looking at a kid who goes undrafted, probably has a longer path to the NHL. Even at the end of that deal, he's still an RFA, and you're probably not looking at a 
particularly large contract unless something has gone very right for you. Well, and he's 23. It's not the Jason Poland, right. Sam Malinsky. 25-year-old We're, year old we're kids, signing this yeah. guy, and if he's not on the NHL team within two years, he's probably gone already. Yep. You know, this is, an eight, this is, this is a teenager uh, in the WHL, which, of course, is a, an area that they – have a lot of resources and a lot of invested knowledge. invested in, for sure. Yeah. And so it's it's all good. Well, you guys know prospects way more than I do. I tell you all the time. So it's an undrafted kid, right? Yeah. So right away, if you're undrafted, the Avs don't have his rights. Exactly. So if you want to keep him, you really like him, you got to sign him. Yeah. Where Hansel, you have his rights. You have time yeah, to sign it, him. And that I would mean, be the only difference it, in my book. They've got know? two years. It's a, They'll sign him next year. It's yeah. a very fair point that... If the Evs didn't sign him, there's a pretty decent trans stage. Why well, yeah. gets drafted next year? So draft, if you really so. like him, you got to yeah. sign him. Because you know. especially, yes, he's undrafted. This is this is the difference here. Yep, totally fair. If he has the kind of year that that the Evs are obviously believing that he could. Yep. Hey, and and this doesn't count against their contract limit. This right. Doesn't count. It all slides. Uh, yeah. There's no big deal. There's there's. Because we've been talking about, oh, the, the, yeah. they're at 45, and then this is what they've got to be up for, you know, whatever. No, this is fine. This is essentially and like an unofficial addition to their most recent draft class. Yeah, that's it. Pretty much. Because he will get here the same time that Cal Ritchie does. Unless you're a crazy person like me and AJ who devours prospect content. <laughs> yeah. It's a name that you probably won't think about very much for the next two years. Yeah. And then we'll see. Certainly not for the next year. We'll see him again in camp next season, whatever. Yep. So and he'll be better because you get better every camp. Hey, look, he Usually. scored the he scored the last goal of the rookie faceoff. Yeah, so that's right. It's a good place to start from. He was on power play and OT, PK right? units. Yeah. Yeah, well, yes. yeah, yeah. So, hey, another dude that maybe he turns into something as far as Colorado is yeah, concerned. Yeah, and I would I would also say like uh, this is one of those I'm going to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because totally. You know, when they signed Nate Clerman when they did, we were all kind of like, mm. Seven years later, we're having a conversation about maybe you throw that guy a bone Seven here. years later, yeah. oh my Takes God, time. it is Takes like, time. yeah. <laughs> you know, and and they've that's an area, they've done a good job developing that position. So if they like a guy enough to give him an ELC, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm, I'll see how it goes. Totally. Sure. Uh, on that note, we are brought to you by Fubo TV, the best way to watch your hockey in Colorado and your other sports, too. You can get over to FuboTV.com slash DNVR or use that QR code on screen today. You get 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. Uh, Fubo's great. They have over 140 channels, which includes uh, obviously sports, but television, movies, all sorts of other stuff, too. Actually, we were talking about this the other night. It's uh, It's Halloween television season, which is significantly better than Christmas television season. We're all in agreement. Yep. You get the best shows through Halloween, whether it be, you know, you can be into horror if you want, or maybe you're more of like a, a Disney fan of things like Hocus Pocus. Homer. Uh, what, what's the other? It's like Halloween High School. Halloween, Halloween Town. Town. Thank you. I yeah, love that. That's good. That movie growing up. Uh, <laughs> lots of options, all of which you can get through Fubo. <laughs> Go check them out. Uh, again, easiest way to watch sports in Colorado right now and they also include a thousand hours of cloud DVR at no extra charge so you can have all your games recorded if you're out on the town for the night <laughs> or whatever it is uh, go over to fubotv.com slash dnvr to get that 15% off your fubo pro for the first month and enjoy watching whatever it is you want to uh also brought to you by broken team maybe that's the reason you're using the dvr over on fubo you're out on the golf course. It's a little chilly today, but I have it on good authority that it's going to warm up next week. So, you know, get the golf in while it's still good because it is Colorado. Eventually, you're not going to be able to golf any more this season. So head over to Broken Tee while you still can. You can use that DNVR code over there to get 10% off of your rounds. Mm -hmm. It's a great golf course to get at. They have 27 holes, an 18-hole championship course, and a challenging par 3 course. So they've got some golf for everybody uh, you can also hit up their restaurant after your round to enjoy some dinner or lunch whenever you finish. I'm not a person who goes golfing at 7 a.m., but maybe you are. Who's to say? Uh, they have a great practice facility, too. Uh, it's just an awesome golf course all the way around. If you've never been down, you got to go check it out. 
Use that DNVR10 code to get 10% off when booking your rounds on their regulation course at BrokenTeagolf.com. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. I wanted to like get a little bit more conversation about this team as a whole and what their keys to success this season are. Obviously, there are things out of their control like health, yada, yada, yada. But if you have to pick one thing that the Avs do well this year, which one is the most important for them? How about I go like this? And I don't even know, and I'm sure you guys know it, um, but I used to always look at it as my special teams combined, my PP and my PK to sure. be in a combined like average of top five in the league. If, if I, I do believe if these guys do it, I do believe PP last year was, or where was PK last year again? Shoot. PK oh. ended up somewhere in the middle, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because they, they, can, they had like that really bad streak to That's start. my point. And, and if they can bring it up, both of them in the top 10, you know what I mean? Yep. I do believe that it solidifies their first, uh, you know, their, them coming out of the West. If you push, like, if you have special teams in the combined of about 110%, yeah. you're, you're doing well. Power so play with six. The two numbers. If yeah. you're adding the PP it, number and the PK. 25%-ish power play, the, yeah, 85%-ish 85, yeah. PK. That's I mean, if you add those two numbers. Yeah, yeah. I like them. never looked at it that way. I like that. Yep. But usually you'd be top 10. Yeah. Give and take. Right. You know? uh, power play was sixth. Penalty kill was 17th. That's what I mean. If the PK can just <laughs> slide into the top 10. Tune it up just a touch. Yeah. Which, you know, having healthy players might help with that. There you go. <laughs> To get to the top 10, they would need a 3% boost of that PK. That shouldn't be that hard to Realistic, get, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I like my, I like my point. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, you know, there are some factors that, that could matter to that. Does yeah. a Ross Colton end up being a, a functional face-off guy on the penalty kill for them? How do you see someone like a, a Frederick Olofsson? Can he get in and be effective on a PK mm -hmm. like that? Where's Josh Manson at? Because he was a big part of that PK last year when he was healthy. Tatar, right? Does he sure. help you? You know yeah. what I mean? He has good underlying Obviously, defensive metrics. Shakespeare, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think Shakespeare's getting any PK time, but PP time. No, for but I mean, sure. on the PP, I'm just saying, you know, obviously he has to, to stay, produce on the power play. To stay yeah. in the top three. No, you know for what sure. I mean? like yeah, top, no, top totally. six that they were. If he's not producing yeah, on the power yeah. play, no, he's, no, I, of course, he's I know he's not a PK guy. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, the special teams, you know what I mean? So I do believe if they get in there, They'll be really dangerous. All right. Fair enough. AJ, same. Are you in agreement here? Or are you taking some other route? Uh, I think their defensive scoring is a really important part of their success. Yeah, and great has been for the last handful yeah. of years. Um, and, and this is kind of tied to health, but, like, they need, they need second half Sam Gerrard last year. Yeah. They need Bowen Byram to take a legitimate step forward this year. He needs to go from we see flashes to all the oh, time. Great play here, great play there. He'll have some nights where he's just dominating, right? And then other nights where you just don't even see the guy. He needs to take that step forward to being a lot closer to, you know, 60 games. You're getting a bona fide top four defenseman. I'm not asking him to fulfill all the potential at once and within 30 games he's a top pairing player. That's not really how it's going to work, I think. But uh, the a true blue bona fide top four defender because he's not he has not been there consistently uh, should, in, in his NHL career he yet. Push and, for forty plus points this year, right? Uh, right. He should really like yes, uh, forty points should be from in my opinion that should be Baseline, in the neighborhood. Yeah, if it's thirty two, I'll be disappointed. If it's thirty eight, give me you're, a break. You're living with that for sure. But like uh, he should really. For me, he needs to push there. Devon Taves needs to be in that 50-point range. Kale McCarr is going to be in the 100-point range if he stays healthy I, enough. So I think Devon Taves is an interesting one because he was well within the range you'd want from him last year. Uh -huh. But he could have scored five or six more goals pretty easily. There he, were he, so many backdoor chances that just did not go in the net for and, him. And like the year before, he... All of them were yeah, in. Yeah. And then in the postseason, too. Like yep. Devon Taves is a sneaky good goal scorer for them, but... In the absence of 
the depth scoring last year at forward. They needed every they inch of that defensive They needed Devontae yeah. to have a little bit better. They needed Bowen Byram. Put the puck in the net sometimes. Um, yeah, and they, you know, Sam Gerrard, that's never going to be like Sam Gerrard. He's going to rack up if assists. You, yeah. If you could take five goals a year out of Sam Gerrard, you do, on opening night, you're yeah. like, this guy's going to give you five of them. Just uh, give me 40 okay. assists on top of that. You're trying to score 300 goals as a team this year. Yep. You've got 295 to go because Sam Gerrard will give you five of them. Yeah, Great. Um, McKinnon and Miko will score a third of them, so. Yeah, I mean, you should probably get right in the range of 100 out of those two guys. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then go from there, you know. So we're at 105. Yep. So. 195 to go. Yeah. Figure it out, boys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's that's, that's the kind of, you know, that's, like, the, yeah. that's the math that you're doing. And, and this was the whole, of course, theory. If you, anybody saw Moneyball. Yep. It's it wasn't you're 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 buying players, you're trying how to buy runs. How do you runs. get to that round number at the exactly. end of the season? Exactly. How do you yet? how do you get to okay, but you also want to have a good enough defense. You know, you you want to have a realistic number, you know, you'd love to give up 160 goals this year. You know, two per game. You'd be <laughs> you'd be the best team in the league. Exceptionally good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You would be exceptionally good. You will push for a 130 point season <laughs> if you accomplish both of those. <laughs> But um, I, th I do defensive scoring, I think, is such a huge part of Colorado's identity. And I think that uh, the way that they have built and invested in this group, they have to get it. They have to get it. Yeah. They uh, rarely ever win a game without multiple <laughs> points coming from their blue line. Yeah. I, just a straight up fact. Um, all right. We do have a couple of super chats to get to as well. 27 kroner from flats who says what does it mean that a guy is dynamic much love so for me when we talk about a guy being dynamic uh, or not you know jonathan durant dynamic logan o'connor not yeah. yeah it's it's for me it's more about what a guy is able to do with the puck can he break a guy can he break down a defenseman one-on-one -on -one? can he break down and abuse space which you almost never have any of in the NHL. But if you can create some yeah. and you can step into it and use it effectively, that I, for me is an element of, uh, that is a dynamic element. That is a guy. It's, it's more about the creation of space than the use of yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's what, can you, what can you do in order to break down defensive structures. Yep. Well, or if you use those terms, creations right there, I was going to say creative, and then mm -hmm. think of it of that way. Um, who'd you use as uh, dynamic? Druan. Okay, so Druan dynamic. Think of it as an artist. You know what I mean? They're just different. And then think of uh, LOC as. Uh, it can't be Shakespeare and Picasso. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. so, uh, <laughs> slow it down. A little no, no, but I mean McKinnon. I like, use McKinnon. Right? McKinnon, he's an artist. And then you're using Logan. Logan O'Connor yeah. is a lunch pail guy. Yeah, you know, meat just potatoes. North -south, the meat potatoes, and yep. that's what that is. And that you know, and he has to play that way to to be effective and to stay in the league. Because if he's again, I'll use that line. I'm gonna use that line. Ty Domi told me one night. Is if it not, you know, if a crusher tries to become a rusher, he often's become an usher. So you got to be <laughs> sticking to what you are: creative, yeah. dynamic, or if you are, you know, not. Well, it, so. it, it, there's. It's a stylistic thing too, right? It is. You talk about Logan O'Connor. He is capable of playing a certain style that allows him to be a lunch pail guy That's or whatever right. you want to say. If Jonathan Druin isn't dynamic, he's not in the NHL. Yeah. It's just his style of play. And and the, the way that the abs, you talk about play style, the way the abs in particular play is dynamic. Yeah. Oh, it is absolutely. the opposite of what the New York Islanders try and do. Grind which out is, every inch of the ice. Well, yeah. and, and the Islanders, yeah, the Islanders want you to go to war. Yeah. Yeah. For every inch of that ice, they want to remove as much of the dynamic element of the game as possible. Yep. And make you earn it. So they've gone and gotten a whole bunch of muckers and grinders and really skilled, you know, Brock Nelson's, Anders Lee. I'm going to go to the net. Yep. And, you know, like not, not a, a bunch of guys that are going to break you down they play extremely tight system with a, with a great shot that yeah. can just beat you from anywhere oh. you know that's not there just isn't really anybody that uh, they keep waiting for oliver wallstrom but like they you know it's it's, it's hard oliver because yeah. oliver wallstrom has to be something he's never been in in his entire life yep 
in order to fit in with what the Islanders do. It's, it's why Matt Barzell is kind of a weird fit there. Um, and their most important player. <laughs> Because their offense will go as he Somebody's goes. got to score the goals. Yeah. Exactly. You've got to be on the same wavelength, management, coaches, and players, identity-wise, because that makes yeah. things so much easier. If not, it gets chaotic. Yeah. yeah. So all of that is what it is to be dynamic on a player mm -hmm. and team level. Yep. Uh, and then we have $10 from Melanie who says, Have a great weekend. So happy the season starts next week. Go Avalanche. Appreciate you, Melanie. Always in here sending out the good vibes. Well, we don't want, like, five more preseason games. Please, no. <laughs> Six was three more than enough. <laughs> Five. Five more than eh, Fair enough, man. Yeah, right. One's good. The rookie tournament, for, it, it does feel like it is enough to, yeah. to get looks at your, your young kids at times. But anyway, I'm good with this conversation. Is there anything else as far as keys to success for Colorado this season that you guys want to touch on? No, I mean health. Uh, of course, yeah, I, I mean Alexander yeah. Georgiev has to be a rock star. There are like you know essential givens for yeah. every hockey team. Yeah, good goaltending and, and health. Yeah, good goaltending can stay healthy. Yeah. yeah, see what the roster is Monday. There you go. And are we a little surprised? Still no cuts today. Like, let's <sighs> just wait and see what happens around the league. We go from there. You just wait till looking, Monday. Looking for the crucial waiver claim? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, wait till Monday. Hey, Caleb Jones on waivers today. It's exactly the guy that I've been spending all <laughs> summer being like. It's about as good as you're going to get. Yeah. Bring him to me. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what the abs end up doing. We appreciate all y'all hanging out with us today. Uh, because you did, make sure you're out here getting in on the diehard action. You can sign up to be a diehard today. Obviously, the season's right around the corner, so we're going to have tons of content coming your way. So go check out the DNVR.com. When you do sign up for a diehard, you get a ton of perks, including a free shirt, 15% uh, off at the DNVR bar. You also get off discounts on other events we have. Uh, plus, if you just want to come hang out at the DNVR bar, we're having an event tonight next from Nashville where a bunch of... Uh, Country singers are coming out, having a good time, putting on a show. Should be a should be a grand old time down here at the bar. Uh, we want to start doing more stuff like that, just so the locals can come hang out at the bar, vibe, enjoy themselves. So have a look. Go to the DNVR.com. You can see our events page for everything that's going down. Uh, we appreciate y'all, uh, and we are going to get out of here. We're off this weekend. We're off Monday. Uh, but you still will have all of our preseason review preview rather season preview videos there we go coming out over the weekend and into next week so keep your eyes peeled the defense video preview is already out there go watch that on this youtube channel the forwards come out tomorrow and then all you fiends for predictions get what you want after that as we start predicting divisions so we appreciate y'all and we will talk to you on the next show <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor, 